Hello viewers, welcome to Edu Audio Teller. So today's story is an IC short story named Fritz. So before starting the audio book of the story, let's know a bit about the story. So Fritz, Fritz is a story written by Satyajit Ray. Uh, uh, the narrator uh, here, the Shankar and his friend Joyanto has came to Bundi after managing to overcome their busy schedule. Joyanto have lived in Bundi for some time as a young child. His father worked in the archaeological department and they lived in the circuit house uh, of, from the British era where the two friends were presently stationed. Joyanto was overwhelmed by childhood memories and was particularly reminded of Fritz, a 12-inch human-like doll which his uncle had bought for him from Switzerland. He had been obsessively attached to the doll. Sadly, it had been destroyed by some dogs and Joyanto had buried it under a deodor tree in the veranda. Joyanto could not sleep at that night. She uh, the narrator was awakened by a sound and he saw Joyanto sit up, wide awake. He had felt something crawl over his body. Then uh, there were so small footprints on the blanket but he was too sleepy to get bothered. The next day Joyanto revealed the narrator that the marks were made by Fritz. Astonished by his friend's behavior, the narrator decided to put uh, the matter to rest by digging up the spot where Fritz had been buried. The two got, uh, friends got hold of a gardener and made him dig the spot. They thought that uh, if he buried the Fritz there, then there must be the, some of the remains of the doll present. Uh, but when they unearth, uh, uh, dig up and unearth that place, they found that in the place where uh, Joyanto uh, digged, uh, means buried the fruits at that very place, their light and uh, human skeleton, 12 inch long human skeleton, and they all were left in amazement because it was such a thing which was never expected uh, by anyone. So, this was about the story. The end of the story is somewhat uh, unpredictable, it's left. Uh, in a four-way place you can think what uh, you want but uh, before starting the story let's also know about the author uh, so the author is Satyajit Ray Satyajit Ray was born on May 2nd 1921 in Calcutta India and died on April 23 1992 in Calcutta he was a Bengali motion picture director writer and illustrator who bought Indian cinema to world recognition with Pathir Panchali, The Song of the Road, in 1955 and its two sequels known as the Appu Trilogy. As a director, Ray was noted for his humanism, his versatility and his detailed control over his films and their music. He was one of the greatest filmmakers of the 20th century. Ray's films span an unusually wide gamut of mood, milieu, period, and gender, with comedies, tragedies, romances, musicals, and detective stories, treating all classes of Bengali society from the mid 19th to the late 20th century. Most of Ray's characters are, however, of average ability. Conscience, uh, stricken person that fascinated Ray. Uh, sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, the most of Ray's characters are, however, of average ability and talents. It was the inner struggle and corruption of the conscience stricken person that fascinated Ray. His films primarily concern thought and feeling rather than action and plot. The motion picture director also established a parallel career in Bengali as a writer and illustrator. Making a significant contribution to children's literature in Bengali, he revived the children's magazine Sundays, which his grandfather Upendra Kishore Rai Chaudhari has started in 1913 
and edited it until his death in 1992. His detective stories and novels are particularly popular with teenage children. Ray created two of the most uh, famous fictional characters ever in Bengali children's literature, Feluda, a sleuth in Holmazian tradition, and Professor Shonku, a genius scientist. His stories are unpretentious and entertaining. Ray also wrote many short stories centered on the thriller, horror, macabre, and paranormal gene where genres were, which were published as collection of 12 stories. Fritz is one such story. It was first published in Bengali in 1971 and this uh, uh, translation in English is by Gopa Majundar. So friends, I would like to share, uh, this was all about the author and before starting the audiobook of press, I wanted to share something with you that uh, uh, soon uh, ICSC and ISC poems which I am providing you with audiobooks only will get their explanations too, uh, short explanations in Hindi where you can just uh, go to the video and you will understand the whole story within minutes and you will feel it very comfortable. So that will come, but uh, that will uh, uh, after few days, maybe. So uh, le uh, before, uh, let's uh, now start the story. Fritz by Satyajit Ray. After having start sta uh, after having stared at Jointo for a whole minute, I could not help asking him, "Are you well? You seem to be in low spirits today." Jointo quickly lost his slightly preoccupied air, gave me a boy's smile and said, No, on the contrary, I am feeling a lot better. This place is truly wonderful. You have been here before. Uh, didn't you know how good it was? I had nearly forgotten, Jointo sighed. Now some of my memories are coming back slowly. The bungalow certainly appears unchanged. I can even recognize some of the old furniture, such as these can chairs and tables. The bureau came in with tea and biscuits on a tray I poured. When did you come here last? 31 years ago. I was six then. We were sitting in the garden of the circuit house in Bundi. We had arrived only that morning. Jointo and I were old friends. We had gone to the same school and college. He now worked in the editorial division of a newspaper and I taught in a school. Although we had different kinds of jobs, it had not made any difference to our friendship. We had been planning a trip to Rajasthan for quite some time. The main difficulty lay in both of us being able to get away together that had at last ma made possible. Most people go to Udaipur, Jaipur and Chittor when they go to Rajasthan but Jointo kept talking about going to Bundi. I had no objection for having read Tagore's poem, The Fort of Bundi. I was certainly familiar with the name of the place and felt a pleasurable excitement at the prospect of actually seeing the fort. Not many people came to Bundi, but that did not mean that there was not much to see there. It could be that from the point of view of the historians, Udaipur, Jodhpur and Chittor had a lot more to offer, but simply as a beautiful place, Bundi was perfect. However, Jointo's insistence on Bundi did puzzle me somewhat. I learned the reason on the train when we were coming down. Jointo's father, Animesh Tash Gupta, had worked in the archaeological department. His work sometimes took him to historical places and Jointo had a child, uh, as a child came to Bundi. He had always wanted to return after growing up. Just to see how much the modern Bundi compared to the image he had in his mind. The circuit house was really rather splendid. Built during the time of the British, it must have been at least a hundred years old. It was a single storied building with a sloping tiled roof. The rooms had high ceilings and the skylights had long dangling ropes which could be pulled to open and shut them. 
The veranda faced the east, right opposite it was a huge garden with a large number of roses in full bloom. Behind there were a lot of trees which obviously housed a vast section of local birds. Parrots could be seen everywhere and peacocks could be heard, but only outside the compound. We had already been on the sightseeing tour of the town. The famous fort of Bundi was placed amidst the hills. We had seen it from a distance that day, but decided to go back to take a closer look. The only reminders of modern times were the electric poles. Otherwise, it seems as though we were back in old Rajputana. The streets were cobbled. The houses had balconies shooting out from the first floor. The carvings done on these and the wooden doors bore evidence of the work of master craftsmen. I was. It was difficult to believe we were living in the age of machines. I noticed Joy though had turned rather quiet after arriving in Bundi. Perhaps some of his memories had returned. It is easy enough to feel a little depressed when visiting a place one may have seen as a child. Besides, Joyanto was certainly more emotional than most people. Everyone knew that. He put his cap down on the table and said, "You know, Shankar, it was really quite strange. The first time I came here, I used to sit cross-legged on these chairs. It seems as though I was sitting on a throne." now the chairs seem both small in size and very ordinary the drawing room here used to seem absolutely enormous if i had not returned those memories would have returned uh, remain stuck in my mind forever i said yes that's perfectly natural as a child one is small in size so everything else seems large one grows bigger with age but the size of other things remains the same doesn't it we went for a trot in the garden after tea joan to suddenly stopped walking and said deodor i started at i stared at him a deodor tree i ought to it ought to be here somewhere uh she said and began uh, stirring towards the far end of the compound why did he suddenly why did he suddenly think of a deodorant tree a few seconds later i heard that his voice heard his voice exclaiming jubilantly Yes, it's here exactly where it was before. Of course, it is here where it was before. I said, "Would a tree go roaming about?" Joan to shook his head impatiently. No, that is not what I meant. All I meant was that the tree is where I thought might be. But why did you suddenly thought of a tree? Joan to st- uh, stared at the trunk of the tree, frowning. Then he shook his head slowly and said, "I cannot remember that now. Something had brought me here near the tree. I had done something here, an European, European. No, I cannot recall anything at the at all. Memory is a strange business. And they had a good cook at the circuit house. Later in the evening, while we sat at the oval dining table." having then joined to said the cook had in those we had in those days was called the lover he had a scar on his left cheek and got eyes uh, were always red but he did, but he was an excellent cook joined those memories began returning one by one soon after dinner When we went back to the drawing room, he could recall where his father used to sit and smoke a cigar, where his mother used to bring, uh, used to knit, and what magazines lay on the table. And slowly, in bits and pieces, he recalled uh, the vehicle business about the uh, whole business about the doll. It was not the usual kind of doll little girls play with. 
One of Jointo's uncle had bought for him from Switzerland a 12-inch long figure, inch long figure of an old man dressed in traditional Swiss style. Apparently, it was very lifelike. Although it was not mechanized, it was possible to bend and twist its limbs. Its face had a smile on it, and on its head, it wore a Swiss cap with a little yellow feather sticking out from it. Its clothes, especially in their little details, were perfect: belt, button, pocket, collar, socks. Uh, there, there were even little buckles on the shoe. His uh, uncle had returned from Europe shortly before Jointo left for Bundi with his parents. The little old man had been bought in a village in Switzerland. The man who sold him had jokingly said to Jointo's uncle, "He is called uh, Fritz. You must call him Fritz by his name. He or else he won't respond." Jointo said, "I had a lot of uh, um, toys when I was so small. My parents gave me particularly everything I wanted, perhaps because I was the only child. I forgot. I forgot all my other toys. I played only with him. At time, a time came when I began to spend hours just talking to him." Other conversation, our conversation had to be one-sided, of course. But Fritz had such a funny smile on his lips and such a look in his eyes that it seems to me as though he could understand every word. Sometimes I wondered if he could actually converse with me, hey, if I could speak to him in German. Now it seems like a childish uh, fantasy. But at that time, at that time, the whole thing was very real to me. My parents, or uh, my parents, did warn me not to overdo things. But I listened to no one. I, I had not yet been put in the school, so I had the freedom. Uh, Time to be uh, to hopefully and remember this uh, class. Um, John to feel silent. I looked at my watch and um, uh, yeah. uh, realized it was 9:30 p.m. It was very quiet uh, outside. We were sh- uh, shouting. We were sitting in the drawing room of the. I in house drawing room. I asked what happened to the dog. Jointo was still deep in thought. His answer to my question came so late that by the time I had started to think that he had not hurt me at all, I had bought to it to Bundi. It was destroyed here. Destroyed? How? Destroyed? Uh, Join the side. He remained sitting out on the lawn having tea. I had not. I had. I had kept the doll by my side on the grass. I was not really old enough to have a tea, but insisted that in the process the cup tilted and some of the hot tea fell on my hand. I ran for so. I uh, ran inside. To change and came uh, clothes. Uh, clo- uh, change and came back to find the uh, find the that Fritz had disappeared. I looked around and found quite soon that a couple of stray dogs were having a, a nice tug of war with Fritz. Although he did not actually come apart, his face was battered beyond recognition, and his clothes were torn. In other words, Fritz did not exist for me anymore. He was dead. And then Jointo's story intrigued me. What could possibly happen after that? I arranged his funeral. That's all. Meaning, I buried him under that deodorant tree, uh, but wanted to make. A uh, coffin. Fritz had, after all, an European, but I could find nothing—not even a little box. 
so in the end i buried him just like that at last the mystery of the deodorant tree was solved at last the mystery of the deodorant tree was solved we went to bed at around 10 our room was a large one and our beds had been neatly made not wing A slight noise woke me up a little later. I turned on my side and found Jayanth sitting upon his bed, the little uh, lamb by his side. I asked, "What was it? Are you not feeling well?" Instead of answering my question, Jayanth asked me one himself. Do you think? The circuit house had got small animals. I mean, things like cats or mice. I it should be. It should. It shouldn't be surprised if it does. Why something will walk around. Um. Ah. Uh, something walked over my chest. That's what woke me. Rats and mice usually uh, do this. Uh, that that's why I just really come into uh, This was the second time I have woken up. Actually, the first time I had heard a shuffling noise near the window. Oh, if it was near the window, it was more likely to be a cat. Yes, but Joint was still searched. Uh, sound still sounded doubtful. I said, "Didn't you see anything after you switched the light on?" Nothing, but then I didn't switch it on immediately after opening my eyes. Uh, to te- to tell you the truth, I felt rather scared at first. But when I did switch it on, there was nothing to be seen. That me- that uh, sorry that means uh, whatever came in must still be here in the room. Well, since both the doors are blotted from inside, I rose quickly and searched under, ha, uh, under the bed, behind our suitcases, and everywhere else in the room. I could not find anything. The door to the bathroom was closed. I opened it and was about to start another search when Joyanto called out to me softly, "Shankar!" I came back to the room. Joyanto was staring hard at the. cover of his quilt upon seeing me he pulled a portion of uh, it near the lamp and said look at this i bent over the clothes and saw tiny brown circular marks on it uh, i said well these could have been made by a cat joanto did not say anything it was obvious that something had deeply disturbed but it was 2:30 in the morning I simply had to get a little more sleep or I knew I I would just keep fe- feeling tired and we had plans of doing a lot of sightseeing the following day so after murmuring a few soothing words like such don't worry uh, such as don't worry I'm here with you and who knows those marks may be have been on your quilt already when you went to bed and switched off the light once more and laid down I had no doubt that Joanto had only uh, had a bad dream. All those memories of his childhood had upset him, obviously, and that was uh, that what had led him to his dreaming of a cat walking on his chest. I slept soundly for the rest of the night. If there were any further disturbances, Joanto did not tell me about them, but I could see in the morning that he had not slept well. Although I must uh, give him one of the tranquilizers I bought with me, 
I thought. We finished our breakfast by nine, as we had planned, and left for the fort. A car had already been arranged. It was almost nine thirty by the time we reached. Some of Joynto's old forgotten memories began coming back again, though fortunately they had nothing to do with this at all. In fact, his youthful exuberance made me think he had forgotten all about it. There. Uh, there, there's that elephant on top of gate," he exclaimed. "And the turrets, and here's the bed made of silver and throne. Look at that picture on the wall. I saw it last time." But within an hour, his enthusiasm began to wane. I was so engrossed myself that I did not notice it at first. But while walking through a hall and looking at the chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, I suddenly noticed. uh realized that joynto was no longer walking by my side where was he we he had a guide with us babu he had gone out on the terrace he told me i came out of the hall and found joynto standing absent mindedly near a wall on the other side of the terrace he did not seem to notice any my presence even when i went and stood beside him He started when I called him by his name. Uh, "What on earth is the matter with you?" I asked. Uh, "Why are you standing here, looking morose, even in a beautiful place like this? I cannot stand it." Joynto simply said, "Have you finished seeing everything? If so, then let's." Had I been alone, I would definitely have spent a little more time at the fort. But one look at Joynto made me decide in favor of returning to the circuit house. A road through the hills took us back to town. Joynto and I were both sitting in the back of the car. I offered him a cigarette, but he refused. I noticed a veiled excitement in the movement of his hand. One moment he placed them near the window, then on his lap, and immediately afterwards began biting his nails. Joynto was quiet by nature. His odd restlessness in him worried me. After about ten minutes, I could not take it any more. It might help you if you told me about your problem. I said. Joynto shook his head. It's uh, no use telling you. For you are not going to believe me. Okay, even if I don't believe you, I can at least discuss the matter with you, can't I? Fritz came into our room last night. Those little marks on my quilt were his footprints. There was very little I could do at this, except catch hold of him by his soldiers and shake him. How could I risk? Uh, sensibly to uh, talk sensibly to someone whose mind was obsessed with such an absurd idea. You don't. You didn't see anything, did you? I said finally. No, but I could distinctly feel that whatever was walking on my chest had two feet, not four. As we got out of the car at the circuit house, I decided the joint to must be given a nerve tonic or some such. Thing. A tranquilizer might not be good enough. I could not allow a thirty-seven-year-old man to be upset by a simple memory from his childhood. I said to join though upon reaching our room, it's nearly twelve o'clock. Should we not be thinking of having a bath? You go first," said join though, and flung himself on the bed. An idea came to my mind in the bath. Perhaps this was the only way to bring join though back to normalcy. If a doll had been buried somewhere thirty years ago, and if one knew the exact spot, it might be possible to dig the ground there. No doubt, most of it would have been destroyed, but it was likely that we would find just a few things, especially if they were made of metals, such as the buckle of a belt or brass buttons on jacket. If Joynto could actually be shown that, that was all that could. Uh, that was left uh, of his precious doll. He might be able to rid himself of his weird notions. Otherwise, he could have strange dreams every night and talk of Fritz walking on his chest. 
if this kind of thing was allowed to continue he might go totally mad Jonathan seemed to like my idea at first but after a little while he said who will do the digging where will you find a spade i laughed since there is a garden there is bound to be a gardener and that would mean there's here's a spade if we offered him a little tip i have no doubt that he would have no objection to digging up a bit of the ground near the trunk of the tree at the far end of the lawn Jonathan did not accept the idea immediately nor did I say anything further he went and w- had his bath after a little bit of persuasion at lunch he ate nothing except a couple of chapatis with meat curry although i knew he was quite fond of his food after lunch he went and sat in the cane chairs on the veranda that overlooked the garden here appeared to be no one else in the circuit house there was something eerie about the silence that afternoon all we could hear was the noise made by the few monkeys sitting on the gulmohar trees around the cobbled path uh, around 3 pm we saw a man come into the garden carrying a watering can he was an old man his chair, hair mustaches and sideburns all were white will you ask him or should i At this question from John to I raised a reassuring hand and went straight to the gardener after I had spoken to him he looked after he had spoken to him he looked me at me rather suspiciously clearly no one had ever made such a request why babu he asked I laid a friendly request Uh, I laid a friendly request, hand on his shoulder, and said, "Don't worry about the reason. I'll give you five rupees. Please do as you are told." He relented, going so far as to give me a salute, accompanied by a broad grin. I beckoned to join Tho, who was still sitting on the veranda. He rose and began walking toward me. As he came closer, saw the pallor on his. Uh, Uh, i saw the paler on his face i did hope we would find at least some part of the doll the gardener in the meantime had fetched a spade the three of us made our way to the deodar tree jointo pointed at the ground about a yard from the trunk of the tree and said here are you sure i asked him jointo nodded silently how much did you dig at least 8 inches the gardener started digging the man had a sense of humor the gardener had a sense started digging the man had a sense of humor he as he lifted his spade he asked if there was a hidden treasure under the ground and if so whether he would be prepared to share it with him i had to laugh at this but jointo's face did not register even the slightest tra- trace of amusement it was the month of october and not and not all the at all warm in bundi yet the collar of his shirt was soaked in sweat he was staring uh, staring at the ground unblinkingly the gardener continued to dig why was there no sign of the dog the raucous cry of a peacock made me turn my head for a moment and in that instant jointo made a strange sound i looked quickly looked at him his eyes were bulging he raised his right hand and pointed at the hole in the ground with a finger that was visibly trembling then he asked in a voice turned ho- hoarse with fear what what is that the spade slipped from the gardener's hand i too gaped at that ground at the ground open mouthed in horror amazement and disbelief there lay at our feet there lay at our feet covered in dust lying flat on its back a 12 inch long pure white perfect little human skeleton so here the audio book of the story has finally ended Uh, so for more videos upon its explanation and question answers do write us in the comment section like the video if uh, subscribe our channel and do share it with your friends thanks for watching